Uh, my name is Tina. Welcome to my channel, The Bag Ladies Finds. Um, the reason why I call myself The Bag Lady is because I'm always carrying around bags. I've usually got two or three bags with me. Um, I also um, like to unpack my bags for you that I get um, bags full of thrift shop finds or estate sale finds. I have one to empty today. Um, but I wanted to point out before I get started, I'm hoping you enjoy the videos. I'm hoping you'll like um, and share this video with other people you think might be interested. And please subscribe. Um, I wanted to show you a couple of items that I got at um, the thrift shop. So this one came from my little thrift shop. This is was a set of six of these. So it's a little demi tasse cup and I think it's a dessert plate. It doesn't have the ring for the saucer for the cup to fit in. So I think it's like a little dessert plate. Um, these are made by Richard Genori and it's they're made in Italy. And that's the reason I picked them up. I did look up comps on Richard Genori and um, I saw quite a few that were selling in the 40 to $50 range, depending on how many place settings there were. And I have six place settings. I bought them for $6. Um, the same thrift shop. I bought this little watercolor. I thought it was an original watercolor, but it's actually a print. Sorry, the light is shining on it. It's a really pretty scene of Hamilton Harbor in Bermuda, and it's signed by C. Holding, the artist. Um, I believe um, these this will probably bring only about $15 or so, but I purchased it for a dollar. Um, the other ones that are much better framed and matted, like bigger frames and everything, those were um, listed for about $29 or $30. So this one will go for a lot less, very cheaply framed. Um, this I picked up at the thrift store. Again, this was at Goodwill this time. And again, it was one of those Goodwill trips where I thought I was gonna find nothing. And I was, almost found nothing. Um, and then I saw this beautiful statue of Mary with Jesus, and it's a planter. But the reason I picked it up is because it still had its original label on it and said Kelpo. And I looked that up um, and those, the comps for selling Kelpo items like this were somewhere in the 25 to 35, almost $40 range. So I think this is a really good example, very three dimensional. Some of them weren't as dimensional as this one. Um, it also is, I think a little bit bigger than some of the other ones I saw sold on. This only cost me $3.99. I found another Mary with Jesus planter by Kelpo, same trip, and that one was $2.99. It was a matte finish. It wasn't as three-dimensional as this one is. So it's a really nice shape. There were no cracks, nothing wrong with it. So let's hope that continues. I hope I don't mess it up in my area over here. So this I bought at the th same thrift shop that I bought the Demi Task Cups. And I bought this and it was a mystery to me for quite a while. I just thought it was a beautiful bowl. It's very, it's light. And though I suspected it was pottery because it's signed and you could tell that it's, you know, clay. Um, you could also tell that it's clay because it looks like this top. You see there's like uneven portions of it. You could tell that was a coil that they, they put on top of the bowl and then patted it down to make it flat. Um, I also thought that the detail here on the band was spectacular. That's why I could not decide whether it was ceramic or not because of that detail. I thought it was so pretty, that woven detail. It almost looks like a basket. Um, it's pretty incredible. And the glaze, the marble glaze and the inside glaze, it was just a gorgeous piece. It was labeled $3.99. I picked it up, had no idea who the artist was. It was driving me crazy trying to figure out who the maker was. I knew it was an artist. I had a feeling it was a fairly valuable piece, but I kept looking at the signature and kept thinking it was Caroline. So I kept looking up Caroline and pottery and the glaze and anything I could think of. I was having no luck. So I went on a Facebook page specifically for art pottery and art pottery collectors, lovers, advice, identifying, I, I think I joined two of those Facebook pages 
and I posted pictures and I said, can please, can somebody help me identify who the artist is? I just wanted to get some research done and see, you know, what I, what the comps were and what it could possibly sell for. Although I do love it and I think I'm going to live with it for a while. But someone did respond the same day and told me that the maker, her name is Candone, Candone, C-A-N-D-O-N-E, Wharton is her last name. And when I looked up her website, sure enough, she had all these beautiful pieces with some similar artwork here. It was just stunning. Um, when I looked at solds, I could probably get about $200 for this bowl when I decide to resell it. So I just thought it was beautiful. So I hope you do too. I, and I learned something, you know, we all don't know enough about, you know, we don't know everything. I, I know very little. I think at this point I'm still learning and watching other uh, YouTubers that resell like um, Karen at Lavender Clothesline and um, Kat the Nurse Flipper. So I've been watching some of those and <clears throat> learn a lot from them. And I hope that I can also be part of that learning process for other people. So this, I picked these up. I went to an estate sale and I was a little disappointed because the estate sale was in someone's garage. It was cold and it was just all stuff out on tables and nothing was priced. So I found a couple of things there. At first I found this mug and it's a mug of Budapest or from Budapest. And it was a pretty mug. When I looked up this, I can't tell because I'm holding it upside down or not. I've got to hold it right side up for you. It says Byler, B-E-I-L-E-R. And when I looked that up for comps, I saw one listing. And the one listing was for, I think, a Budapest mug. And it was listed at $59.99 for the one mug. Didn't sell, I didn't see any solds, I didn't see any comps on sold. So I'm thinking even when I found out that there were two, that I could sell the two of them and possibly make 60 if I sell the two of them together. So I paid, um, well, what I wound up doing was bundling. And so I attributed about $2 a piece on these mugs um, out of my bundle price. One of the other things I got at that same estate sale was this. Now, I remember seeing somewhere that these pie plates, they look fairly common. Um, and you wouldn't think they would be worth a lot of money, but there are some collectors out there. This one is made by Royal China. You see the whole thing about harvest, country harvest on the back. Um, this is has the recipe for a pineapple upside down cake. Again, I wasn't expecting a whole lot just because it was browns and yellows. It wasn't really even really that colorful. But I looked up comps and I found that someone had done an auction on this plate and it sold for $100. So I picked it up and I bought it along with my bundle. I attributed about $3 of my total cost, um, my total buy to this pie plate. So... I just listed it for auction. I started the auction at $35 and I'm hoping for the best. <laughs> I was gonna list it as a buy it now, but you never know. So I, I'm i trying it that way because it cost me $3. I figure, let me see what happens. So I went to another state sale, same day, same morning. And um, you could tell that peop the um, people had passed away and the family was trying to clear out the house. And um, it was a little bit overwhelming. Um, there were books and stuff piled everywhere. Um, some things were priced, some things weren't. Um, with how many clothes were there, I thought that they were charging a pretty high price. They could have sold everything for a dollar garment and made thousands. There was so much there. Um, but in any case, I did walk out with some things and I brought it to them and they just gave me, you know, uh, some things weren't priced and so they just, you know, gave me a price and it was pretty good price. So, um, this was one of the things I bought. It's in really good condition. Looks like it was never used. A beautiful table runner. And I thought with Easter around the corner, this is probably going to sell pretty quickly. Um, and as luck would have it, in another part of the house, I found a second one. So 
Now I can sell two of them. And I got the two of them for $3. So that was a good price because they, they could probably sell for about $24 a piece, I'm thinking. So at this point, just so you know, I'm emptying my bag. I'll show you the bag all full. I couldn't get everything back in <laughs> quickly. So everything's spilling out the top. Um, these I picked up because I just thought they were super fun. Swim trunks. Um, the name on them was Mambo label. I didn't recognize it. I, and it says Australia, but made in China. So anyway, I just thought they were super fun. I think things that are graphic like this and loud, I think they kind of sell in the surfer crowd or people that want to be like the surfer crowd. So I think that this will do very well. I'm thinking probably about $20, $25 and possibly more. I have to uh, really kind of do some research on this. And um, this cost me $2. And then I found some great Christmas sweaters. So with the whole ugly Christmas sweater thing, um, I thought these would sell very well because they're, the, they're not, okay, so they're vintage. They are not made to serve the ugly sweater craze. And t these tend to bring a little bit more money when they were actually vintage and made to be sweaters that people wore during the holidays in the 80s and the 90s. Um, this one has got a Croft and Barrows label. Um, so that's a local label here. Or I think it might be, it might be Cole's Croft and Barrow, right? So um, these, I got two Christmas sweaters. They were each $4. And this one, I'm trying to look. Oh yeah, look, even the zipper pull has like little snowflake crochet pull. So I think that'll sell very well. And then this one is so typical. Now, I used to be in retail product development and there was a company called Tiara that made sweaters like this. But this was a very typical, look at that, with the Christmas tree and the presents and the tree has ribbons on it. I mean, this is the whole nine yards. So cable on the mock neck, um, there's cable design. I have to wash it, which is kind of kind of gross right now. Um, but this is size 1820, which is also a really good thing because um, large size items um, sell, plus size items sell very well. And this was made, this was from Fashion Bug. So, um, and just as a little lesson here, since I was in product development, I know a lot about the manufacturing of sweaters. Okay, this, see the way this is done and the loops go across? That's a jacquard, but see this, I'm gonna see if I can show it. See where this, the colors are tied off and you only see it in certain sections. It looks like they tied off the thread and went to another color. That's called intarsia, just so you know in case you're educating yourself on sweater manufacturing or design or construction. And then I got a couple of t-shirts. The t-shirts were $2 a piece. Um, but some of them were just fun. Like this one was super fun. It's like a young men's space cats. And Space Cats on Tie Dye by D O M, I think is the name of the manufacturer. I'll show you the label. And I saw these were selling there. They're not selling for a lot because there's actually quite a few out there on eBay, but I just thought they were super fun. And even if I didn't sell it, I think one of my boys would like it. So, cause it's kooky. Um, I could probably sell it for about $14, maybe, maybe 20. I don't think 20, probably 14. Um, then I got Nautica is a label that sells very well. And I got this because I thought it was a really nice graphic with the margarita glass. And on the back it says, any hour can be happy hour. I like the sentiment. So this again was $2. I believe I could probably sell this one for 20. Um, this I got because we do um, these graphics 
sell really well in this market of this plus size market. Um, this is made by a company called Northern Reflections. Again, a big company in, I'd say, the 80s, 90s, for sure. Um, this has cute little birdhouses on it. It also has birdhouses on the sleeves or something on the sleeves. No, oh, a little, little birdie on the sleeves. So that's cute. So we'll see how I make out with that. I have sold um, sweatshirts that were kind of like had the embroidery on them and the, like the Johnny collar or the double collar here that is typical for middle-aged ladies to wear in the 90s. So <laughs> I've sold those pretty well. So I think the t-shirt will do well. This I picked up because I know there's a lot of people, uh, women who enjoy, love to show off cat wear. So this is by Top Stitch. Um, I think this will be popular. I have to run these things through the wash, um, but I think this will go over well. You could see this is, okay, another lesson. This is called applique, okay? These are not printed. They're actually cut from felt and they're stitched on applique. And then the collars are embroidered and they even have like a little rhinestone on their collar. Sweet kitties. And this one I picked up because it was brand new. And I looked up Alfred Dunner solds. So I did looked at comps on this and Alfred Dunner's new uh, with tags items, um, tops were selling for about $24. So I thought I could uh, do pretty well with this. It's, um, it's nothing, um, outrageous or super, super special, but I think it's very saleable. Um, it has the lettuce edge on the bottom and on the sleeve. So it's very pretty. It's very nicely well, well made. And then I picked up another pie plate. <laughs> it was pie plate day. Actually, this estate sale had about 10, I think eight to 10 pie plates, but I looked them up and they all had the recipes on them. I think they were all Royal China. This again is another one that says Country Harvest on it. I found that the blueberry one was, uh, had better comps than some of the other ones that I saw there. So I just picked up the one. There was like a cherry pie, there was a cheesecake one. There were, like I said, about eight of them. But here at this estate sale, I just picked up the one. So I'm hoping that I could sell this one for about maybe $40, $50. Not as big as the pineapple upside down. And that cost me four. And then the last thing I'm gonna show you is an experiment for me. I took. A little bit of a risk on this, not a big risk, obviously, since I think I only paid like two or three dollars for each of these bundles of fabric. But this lady was a sewer and I saw some really cute fabric. This is a seersucker. You see that like ripple in it? It makes it like a seersucker. And all of these strawberries are, I can't tell if they're printed or embroidered. At first I thought they were print embroidered. Oh, I think they are embroidered. See, that's the reverse of them. I think they are embroidered. They have a dimensional feel. So yeah, they're embroidered. So that's spectacular. So this is all over embroidered strawberries on seersucker. I think this will sell very well. Don't know how many yards I have. Um, I may sell it by the yard or I may sell the whole piece. I'll probably just put the options out there. But again, for two or three dollars, I forgot which, um, I thought this was a good deal and I think I'll make some profit on it. The other fabric I picked up was this sweet little fabric. I thought it was really cute with the kiddos on it and they're playing in the outside. Um, the only thing about both of these fabrics and the, the reason why I was kind of on the fence about it is because the salvage edge didn't have any printing on it. Usually the salvage edge, the straight edge that you see, that's kind of, you could tell it's, not cut it's just it's it's got uh finished on the edge so the selvage edge usually has the name of the design the company that designed it and this didn't have anything so either it was done before then or it just was a cheap fabric i'm not sure 
but I thought it was super sweet. I thought it had some vintage appeal. So um, I'm hoping that I'm right on that and that I can make a profit on this as well. Although at, you know, $3 for all this yardage, I think I probably can't go wrong. Um, so that's all I had to show you today. I am going to try to open an Instagram account and post some things maybe that I sell um, out of what you've seen. Um, I also am planning on doing a sold video where I can go through, you know, maybe last two weeks of sale items that items that I've sold and I could show them to you. Um, and that way you can see what, what I bought it for and what I'm selling it for and um, what actually happens. Cause right now I'm just telling you what my best guesses are. So um, thank you so much for watching and um, I'll see you soon.